type scripts for textbook. Unit one, lesson one, exercise one. Questions one to ten. Choose answers such as name, nationality, specialty, and address from letters A to D. My name is Mark Thompson. Oh, how do you spell your surname? T T H O M P S O N, and my given names spelt M A R K. Where do you come from? Well, I live in France, but my nationality is British. What's your name? My name has a strange spelling. I'm called Carol Schmidt. That's spelt S C H M I D T. Oh, that's German, isn't it? Yes, my name is German, but I am American. Is that Carol with or without an e? Without, C A R O L. Where do you live? Quite close, on Green Road. We're neighbours. I live round the corner on Main Street. So what do you do? I am studying international finance. How about you? I'm studying biology. I hope to go on to do medicine if my exam results are good. Unit one. Lesson one. Exercise two. Questions one to eight. You'll hear a freshman introduce herself. Complete the notes below. Write numbers and or no more than three words for each answer. Hi everyone. My name is Lucy Smith. I'm eighteen years old. My parents are Australian, but actually my nationality is German, because I was born and raised there. I am from a really beautiful city called Munich, which is in the south of Germany. I am going to be studying modern languages. My major is Spanish, and my minor is Italian, because I love learning about new cultures. My hobbies are traveling and skiing. Unit One, Lesson One, Exercise Three. Questions One to Twelve, Entertainment News. Three Hollywood movie stars self introductions. Complete the notes below. Kate Winslet. K A T E W I N S L E T was born in the southwest of England, in a small city called Reading. That's spelt R E A D I N G. She still lives in England, and has a large house in the countryside, just outside London. Her hobbies include. Painting. Mel Gibson. M E L G I B S O N is thought by most people to be Australian, but in fact he was born in Peekskill. P E E K S K I L L, which is in America. He, however. Moved to Australia when he was young, and he still lives there now on a big farm with his many children. His biggest hobby is looking after his farm.
Britney Spears. B R I T N E Y S P E A R S was born in Kentwood, which is spelt K E N T W O O D. That is in the south of the United States, and she still has a house there, although she actually lives now in California. Her favorite hobby is shopping. Unit One. Lesson Two. Exercise One. Questions One to Ten. Complete the notes below using numbers in what you've just heard. London has a population of seven million people. Mount Snowdon in Wales is two thousand nine hundred and twenty-seven feet high. The Nile is one thousand five hundred and twenty-nine kilometers long. Shakespeare was born in fifteen sixty-four. The average camera costs two hundred and ninety-nine dollars. People need, on average, eight hours sleep to stay healthy. During the Black Death, forty percent of people in Europe were killed. Queen Victoria had nine children. America became independent in 1776. The European Union has expanded to twenty-five member countries. Unit One, Lesson Two, Exercise Two. Questions one to ten. Complete the table below using no more than three words for each answer. Hello, are you here to register? That's right. My name is Peter Smith, spelt. P E T E R S M I T H. What's your date of birth? The tenth of the tenth, nineteen seventy-five. And your telephone number? My mobile number is o seven 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 o two nine six four seven nine, and my home phone number is o one two six five six four nine six seven four. Okay, and could you tell me your postcode, please? Sure, it's S E one two L P. Great. What's your nationality? I'm Irish. What's your city of birth? Dublin. How's that spelt? D U B L I N. Do you have your ID card with you? Yes, it's right here. What's your student number? P nine five eight three eight six one nine six X. Do you have an email address? Yes, it's cleverpeter at hotmail dot com. And finally, what's your major? Geography. Unit Two. Lesson Three. Exercise One. Questions One to Ten. Circle the correct answer from A to D. Welcome, new students. I am just going to give a quick introduction to the campus. Firstly. The building we are in now is the library. It is open twenty-four hours per day for studying. If you want to borrow a book, the time is eight a.m. until eight p.m. 
The big white building next door is the gym. It's free for most things. You do have to pay to use the football pitch. On the east side of the campus are are all the laboratories. If you are looking for a building that has the letter L before the number, it is a laboratory. For example, L twenty two is laboratory twenty two. On the west side of the campus are the student dormitories. There is a student welfare office on the ground floor of the library. If you lose your student card, then you need to go to the lost and found office. The lost and found office is at the main gate. There are three places you can have something to eat. There is a small supermarket near here. There is a large student dining hall in the center of campus. There are kitchens on every floor of the student dormitory buildings. Unit two. Lesson three. Exercise two. Questions one to ten. Circle the correct answer from A to D. I have to go to G twenty three. Do you know where that is? Yes, it's the geography department. It's really close. Excuse me, do you know where I can access the internet? Yes, you can do that at the library. It's a really big grey building. Is there a theatre on campus? Yes, there are actually three. The biggest is in the same building as the dining hall. Are there any sports facilities? Yes, there's the main indoor gym, but there is also a swimming pool which is near to the campus, about five minutes walk from here. You can play indoor football and basketball at the gym. Where can I register? Oh, you need to do that at the registration office in the main building. It's at the east gate. I want to buy some groceries. Where can I do that? There is a big supermarket off campus, but on campus there is only a small shop. It's actually cheaper to eat in the dining hall, and there is a really great snack bar in the same building as the library. Unit two. Lesson three. Exercise three. Questions one to ten. Choose the correct answer from A to B to complete sentences. Hi, my name's Henry Botter. I wonder if you could help me. Sure. What do you need to know? I am looking for the admission office. Oh, I know where that is. Can you see that big white building? The one with the double door. That's right. That's the art department. You need to turn right just before there. Okay. What about after that? You need to continue for about a hundred meters. You'll come to a big glass building. What building is that? It's the dining hall. The easiest thing is to go straight through the building. On the other side, turn left. Okay. What next? You'll see some smaller buildings. Those are all science buildings. Just keep going until you get to a small crossroad. You need to turn right. Then you see a really tall building with a big sign which says "Welcome, new students." The office you are looking for. Is on the fourth floor. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure.
Unit 2. Lesson 4. Exercise 1. Questions 1 to 9. You'll hear a conversation between a senior student and a freshman. The freshman asks about the direction. Fill the information about campus facilities in the map below. Hi, can you help me find some places on campus? Sure, I'll give you a guided tour if you like. That's great. Where are we now? We are at the main gate. What's that building on the left? That's the admission office. OK, and what's that bigger building behind it? That's the Modern Languages Building. Anyone can use that building to learn a new language. That sounds great. What's that place in front of the main gate? That's the dining hall. Is the food any good? It's OK, I suppose. What are those three buildings on the right of the dining hall? They are the science building. The first one is biology, the middle one is physics, and the third one is chemistry. What's that beautiful round building? That's the students' recreation building. They have games and loads of activities for free. Wow, that's wonderful! Yeah, that really huge building near it is the gym. Most of the sports are free, but some you have to pay for. To the right of the gym, in that quite big building, are all the dormitories. What's that building in the northwest corner of the campus? That's the English Literature Department. I study there. Really? Yes. And the building between that and the Modern Languages Department is the library. Unit 3 Lesson 5 Exercise 1 Questions 1 to 10 Circle the correct answer from A to D. Where is the nearest bank? There are many on the main street in town. Oh, is there anywhere closer? Yes, the post office is like a bank. What is the best bank for saving money? Actually, a building society is best for that. They have better interest rates for savers. Why is that? Because the people who use the bank actually own the bank as well. OK, but what about if I want to access my money every day? A normal bank is best for that. There are many to choose, choose from. Many of them give free gifts to new customers. When do banks normally open? They open at 9am and close at 5 p.m. They are usually closed on Saturday afternoon and always closed on Sunday. Who can open a bank account? Anyone can open one, as long as they have two forms of identification. What are those? Like a passport or an ID card. You also need a letter showing where you live. Why is that? It's the law. What's the minimum deposit? Usually one dollar. How can I get to the bank? There are lots of buses that go to that street from opposite here. Thank you. Unit 3 Lesson 5 Exercise 2 Questions 1 to 7. Complete the table below by using no more than three words or numbers for each answer. Hello, how can I help you? I would like to open a bank account. OK. Well, first you need to fill in this information form. Fine. What's the first thing you need to know? What's your name? Neil Prince. How do you spell that? 
N E O L P R I N C E. Okay, and what's your date of birth? December the twelfth, nineteen eighty-three. I also need to know your place of birth. I was born in Smallville, Monrovia. How do you spell that town? S M A L L V I L L E. Okay. I also need to know your current address. Sure, that's one five six Blue Avenue. Okay, and do you know your zip code? Yes, it's one seven four nine three two. Thank you. Do you have a telephone? Mobile or home phone? You can tell me both. My mobile number is o seven eight five o one seven four. Eight three six, and my home phone is o four six three seven three nine eight six five. Unit three. Lesson five. Exercise three. Questions one to ten. Complete the table below. Let me tell you about the different services of the account. First, you can have a cheque book. Your first book is free and has twenty cheques. Your second book you must buy. It costs ten dollars. You can use it if you have no cash. You can have a credit card. If you have a salary more than eight hundred dollars per month, there is an annual fee of five dollars. You pay this on the first of January each year. Interest is thirteen percent each year. Now, if you take too much money out of your account, then you must pay a fine. It's fifteen dollars each time. The money will be taken out of your account on the twenty-eighth of the next month. If money is deposited into your account, you can use it after twelve p.m. Money deposited by check takes ten days to clear. Unit three. Lesson six. Exercise one. Questions one to ten. Fill in the following blanks according to what you hear. Okay. Now I need to know what kind of bank account you'd like. I don't really know. Well, what do you need a bank account for? I want to be able to save my money. I also want to be able to access it if I need to. Okay, I think you need two accounts. First, a deposit account for saving your money. You can only withdraw money after one hundred days. Does that pay good interest rates? Yes, four percent annually before tax. The other account you need is a current account. What's that? It's for the money that you use regularly. Yes, I do need that. Do you need anything else? Can I borrow money if I need it? I am thinking of buying a house and a new car. Okay. To buy a house, you need a mortgage. For a new car, you need a personal loan. They are different things. Okay. I'll think about that. One thing I need now is a bank card. Certainly, that is free. Do you also need a credit card? Maybe. Do I have to pay that? Yes, thirty dollars per year. All right. I think it will be useful. Okay. Let's fill in these forms, and then you can get your cards. Thanks. Unit three. Lesson six. 
Exercise 2. Questions 1 to 8. Label the buildings on the map below. OK, now let me show you where everything is. As you come in the entrance, the information desk is in front of you. Behind that is the help desk. If you have a problem, they will be able to deal with it. On the left side are the officers. The first one is the manager's office. Then in the middle is the mortgage office. And the last one is the personal loan office. On the right, as you come in, is a waiting area with some chairs. If you have an appointment, you can sit here. In the far left corner are the cashiers. You can deposit and withdraw money there. The other counters down the far right are the Bureau for Change, where you can change your money. Unit 3 Lesson 6 Exercise 3 Questions 1 to 5 Complete check below How do I fill in this checkbook? I want to write one now. OK, it's actually quite easy. On the first line, you write who you are giving the money to. That's Green Supermarket. OK, write Green Supermarket. Now underneath you write the amount of money in words. $25.99 Do I have to write it all in words? Yes, I know it is very long. Then in the small box on the right, you write the same thing in numbers. I understand. Now you need to write the date at the top right. How do I write it? In numbers or in words? Both are OK. Today is the 14th of August, 2005. What else? You need to sign it. Where do I do that? At the bottom, where it says Signature. Unit 4 Lesson 7 Exercise 1 Questions 1 to 8 You will hear an orientation lecture made by an administration officer. Complete the form below according to the tape. Write no more than three words for each answer. Well, hello everyone. It's lovely to see so many new faces. Let's start by talking about some of the campus facilities. Most important, of course, it's the building where we are now, the Student Hall. It's normally used for large lectures. We also have a very reasonable cante canteen on the ground floor that sells a range of cheap meals. The main faculties on this campus are the departments of microbiology, physics and medicine. Other departments are at a different site. There is a large, well-equipped library and multimedia centre where you can access the internet. Of interest to many of you might be the Student Union, which organises all the fun extracurricular activities for students. If you have any problem, then you can speak to someone in the Student Welfare Office. Unit 4 Lesson 8 Exercise 1 Questions 1 to 7 A school counsellor is giving a speech. Complete the form below according to the speech.
This year, we are trying something new. All registration will take place electronically. First, you press New Registration on the screen and enter your electronic PIN. Your student ID number and date of birth together form your electronic PIN. So if your student ID is 123456 and your date of birth is the 10th of October, then your electronic PIN is 123456-1010. Got that? Next, you need to fill in your full name, followed by male or female. Next, you need to input your course name. After that, it will ask you for your full address. Press Enter and then it will ask you for your postcode. Unit 4 Lesson 8 Exercise 2 Questions 1 to 5 Listen to a short story on the tape and answer the questions below. He finishes packing his suitcase and opens the door. A taxi is waiting for him. Who is he? A young man. A student. Where is he going? He is going to a foreign country to begin his studies in accounting. Has he been there before? No, he's a little afraid because it's his first time travelling on his own. His mum hugs him. His dad opens the car door. They wave as the taxi begins to move. When does his plane leave? He looks at his ticket again. 2.30 p.m. He still has three hours. What will he do when he gets there? Go to the university to register. How will his life be in a different place? He doesn't know. Unit 5 Lesson 9 Exercise 1 Questions 1 to 4 You will hear four short conversations on the tape. Please label the buildings on the map below. Hi, could you tell me how to get to the Hall of Residence? Yeah, go to the left of this building in front of you, walk straight ahead, and it's the first on the right. Excuse me, where is the science department? You need to go right. Take the first road on the right, and it's the second building on the left. Can you help me? I'm trying to find the library. Go to the right of the garden. Turn left and walk straight ahead. It's the second building on the right-hand side. It's really big. You can't miss it. I'm sorry to bother you. Where is the refectory? OK. Turn left here past the garden. Turn right and it's the last building on the left. Unit 5 Lesson 9 Exercise 2 Questions 1 to 8 Listen to 8 short conversations. Fill the map bow. Hello. What's that building straight ahead? Oh, that's the student union. How do I get to the business studies department? Take the road on the right and just keep going 
until you get to the last building on the right. That's it. Excuse me, where is the cafeteria? Oh, that's right in the middle of campus. You can't miss it. Either road will take you there. What's that really big building to the left? Those are the administration offices. Are there any sports facilities on campus? Yes. Take the road on the left and take the first left and then first right. There are some courts for basketball. Hi. I am trying to find the library. Could you help me? Sure. Take the road to the left and it's actually right in front of you. Is it far to the Hall of Residence? Not really. Take the road to the right. Keep going and when you see a round building, the Hall of Residence is behind that. Where can I buy some new textbooks? The campus bookshop is in the northwest corner of the campus. It's walking distance. Unit 5 Lesson 10 Exercise 1 Questions 1 to 6 Listen to an orientation lecture on the tape. Circle the correct letter A to D. Welcome, one and all. I am the chairman of the Student Union. I'm here to tell you what the Student Union can do for you. We are here to look after your welfare and support your rights as well as make your life more fun. If you think you have been unfairly accused of something, then you need to go to the Complaints Department. We also have a Student Hardship Office. That's for if you're having financial worries. We can't give you money, but we can tell you where to get help from elsewhere. The Student Union Association organises all the societies for sport, etc. I feel confident saying we have something for everyone. We also have a fantastic entertainment organisation committee. They arrange concerts on a regular basis in the University Theatre. Unit 6 Lesson 11 Exercise 1 Questions 1 to 10. Listen to the tape in which a program host from gymnasium will introduce sports to you. Complete the following gaps. Hello and welcome to Sports Time. Today we are going to talk about sports that are just right for this summer season. Sports generally can be divided into two categories, high and low impact. This refers to the degree of intensity of the exercise. In the first group, we can put sports like tennis and running. Both of them are great summer sports, taking advantage of the good weather. Remember, if you are going to exercise outside, to drink plenty of water. Lower intensity exercises include swimming and table tennis. Swimming is a perfect way to cool off if the temperature gets too hot. Of course, many sports, like dance and basketball, can be either high or low intensity. If you want some gentle exercise, concentrate on improving skills rather than increasing your fitness level.
Unit 7 Lesson 13 Exercise 1 Questions 1 to 8 You are going to listen to a conversation between an interviewer and a superior. Answer the questions below and use no more than three words to complete the following gaps. I would like to ask you some questions about your health for a project I'm doing. Is that OK? Sure. What is the project for? Well, I major in nutrition. I'm writing an essay on longevity. That means living for a long time. OK. This should be interesting. May I ask you if you smoke? Yes, I do. How many cigarettes every day? Between 40 and 60. At the weekend, I smoke 100. What do you eat for breakfast? I don't eat breakfast. What do you eat for lunch? Usually a hamburger and french fries. What do you eat for dinner? I always eat a big pizza for dinner. It's my favourite. OK. How much alcohol do you drink? I usually have one bottle of beer for breakfast, two for lunch and three for dinner. I have double of that on the weekend. Do you sleep well every night? I go to bed at 2 a.m. every day and get up at maybe 5 a.m. So you only sleep three hours every night? Yes. Do you play any sports? Yes, I play computer games. Mm, that's not what I mean. Well, I always feel really tired afterwards and have to drink some beer to relax. Unit 7 Lesson 14 Exercise 1 Questions 1 to 3 Listen to the dialogue between two students and circle the correct letter A to D. Oh no! They always have unhealthy things to eat here. I like what they have. Look at this. Pizza, hamburgers, french fries. There are no vegetables at all. I don't like vegetables. I am happy with the food here. Students eat so badly. Well, we're young, so it doesn't matter. Yes, of course it does. The earlier you start to eat healthily, the better. If you eat bad food now, you can get sick when you are older. I don't believe that. I do lots of sports, so I think I will be OK. That doesn't matter. When you are 40, you'll be fat and tired every day if you eat like this. Are you telling me you never have any problem? Never. But you are always going to the toilet. Yes, I have a bad stomach. What do you mean? Every time I eat something, I feel pain in my stomach. That's what I'm saying. It's the food you eat that makes you sick. No, it's not. It's because I eat too quickly. What do you have for breakfast? I don't have breakfast. I'm too busy. I have a big dinner instead. That's so wrong. Breakfast is important. You shouldn't have big meals, just lots of small ones. You especially shouldn't eat a lot of food in the evening. It's bad for you. Unit 7 Lesson 14 Exercise 2 Questions 4 to 5 Listen to the dialogue and complete the gaps below. Oh no! They always have unhealthy things to eat here. I like what they have. Look at this. Pizza, hamburgers, french fries. There are no vegetables at all. I don't like vegetables. I am happy with the food here. Students eat so badly. Well, we're young, so it doesn't matter.
Yes, of course it does. The earlier you start to eat healthily, the better. If you eat bad food now, you can get sick when you are older. I don't believe that. I do lots of sports, so I think I will be okay. That doesn't matter. When you are forty, you'll be fat and tired every day if you eat like this. Are you telling me you never have any problem? Never. But you are always going to the toilet. Yes, I have a bad stomach. What do you mean? Every time I eat something, I feel pain in my stomach. That's what I'm saying. It's the food you eat that makes you sick. No, it's not. It's because I eat too quickly. What do you have for breakfast? I don't have breakfast. I'm too busy. I have a big dinner instead. That's so wrong. Breakfast is important. You shouldn't have big meals, just lots of small ones. You especially shouldn't eat a lot of food in the evening. It's bad for you. Unit eight. Lesson fifteen. Exercise one. Questions one to nine. Listen to the dialogue about student union, and complete the application form below. I'm wondering whether I should become a member of the student union. What do you think? Well, I'm already a member. In fact, I work for them as well. Really? Yes. There's a vacancy at the moment for someone in the administration department. What do you need for the job? Well, you have to be really familiar with what they do. You know, the student union actually has a lot of functions. Like what? Well, they organize social events. They give advice to advice to all students who are having problems. They also are responsible for all societies and clubs in the university. Sounds like a lot of work. No, you can do it. Do you have any work experience? I worked part time last summer as a clerk in a small office. What duties did you have? I did lots of photocopying. I sometimes answered the phone, and I made coffee for the managers if they asked me. Well. All office work is pretty much the same. Are you computer literate? Do you mean can I use a computer? Sure, of course I can. Well, that's all you need. Okay, I think I'll go for it. Unit nine. Lesson seventeen. Exercise one. Questions one to eight. You will hear eight international celebrities talk about their jobs, and then complete the gaps below. Write no more than three words for each answer. My name is David. I am a professional footballer. I have played at the highest level for more than twelve years now. I love my job, but I love other things as well, especially fashion. My name is Tony, and I am the Prime Minister of England. Before I went into politics, I was a lawyer. That's how I met my wife. She is a lawyer too. My name is Madonna, and I am a pop star. I have been successful for twenty years. It is difficult to be a superstar for such a long time, but I try very hard. My name is Yao. I am a basketball player. I play in America, but I come from Shanghai in China. The hardest thing about being in America is coping with the language.
My name is Bill. I run a very successful IT business. We make software and sell it round the world. I make a lot of money by doing this. My name is Stephen. I have written many books on science. I am a professor of physics. Many of my ideas are very famous. My name is Charlie, and I am a landscape designer. I design gardens for people. I really love my work. My name is Stephen. I am a really famous movie director. Many people think my movies are among the best ever. Unit nine. Lesson eighteen. Exercise one. Questions one to ten. You will hear a job interview where a student applies for a waiter's position in a school cafe. Complete the gaps below. Hello. I want to apply for the position of waiter. Certainly. First, I have some questions. Fire away. What do you need to know? Firstly, what's the schedule of ours? It's a part-time position, working every other day. Each shift is in the evening, from six p.m. until nine thirty p.m. Sometimes you finish later if there is a lot of cleaning to do. Okay. What's the rate of pay? Very important, of course. It's nine dollars per hour. And you also get to keep the tips. What duties do I have? You have to look after the customers on your own three tables. You must make sure the tables are always clean. Am I responsible for anything? Yes, you must make sure that the customers pay the correct money. If the money in the cash register is incorrect at the end of the evening, you must pay the difference yourself. And when do you pay the wages? We always pay the last day of the month. Unit ten. Lesson nineteen. Exercise one. Questions one to nine. Listen to the conversation on the tape. Complete the following gaps. I can't think what I need to take with me on this trip. Do you have any idea? The best thing to do is make a list of everything. When you have done it, you can tick it. Okay. So what do I need? You need your passport. I have that. Do you have a visa? Yes. Okay. Those are most important. You also need some foreign money, maybe five hundred dollars. A guidebook for the country is also good. You need a map of the place you are going. Right. I can. I can get all those things. Do you have a reservation for a hotel? You also need to book a plane ticket. Can you help me do that? Of course. Also, you need to pack things that you will need. Like what? It depends on the weather in the country you are going to. I will take a coat in case of rain. Unit ten. Lesson twenty. Exercise one. Questions one to eight. Listen to the conversation between two friends. Complete multiple choices below. Circle the correct answer from choices A to D. So, how was your holiday? It was absolutely fantastic, but very expensive. Where did you go? I went to London. I saw so many wonderful things. I saw Buckingham Palace and the changing of the guard. 
What's that? Buckingham Palace is where the Queen of England lives. The changing of the guard is when they change the soldiers outside her home. It's beautiful. They wear red clothes with big black hats made from bears, and some of the men ride horses. Wow! What else did you see? I went to the British Museum. They have things from every country in the world. That sounds expensive. Not at all. All the big museums in England are free, and many of the small ones too. Even if you have to pay, it usually isn't much. Did you try the local food? Some of it. I had fish and chips, and I also tried the sweet food. My favourite was apple crumble. It is a sweet dish made with apples, and it is crunchy on top. Where did you stay? I stayed in the University of London's Hall of Residence. In the summer, they let tourists stay there, and it's really cheap. Unit Eleven. Lesson Twenty One. Exercise One. Questions one to ten. Listen to the conversation on the tape. Two speakers are talking about their mountain climbing activity. Complete the gaps below. We had the best time that summer, didn't we? Yes, I think that was the best mountain climbing expedition I ever did. I really thought we were going to die. But in the end, everything was okay. I know it was frightening and exciting at the same time. Who was the leader that time? It was a man called John. He was an American living in France. Oh yes, I remember now. He was very tall with blonde hair, blonde hair, and bright blue eyes. That's right. He saved our lives. Was it June or July we went? It was definitely June. Because it was at the same time as my birthday, remember? We all went to the bar to celebrate my birthday just before. Yes, yes, I remember now. It was the sixteenth of June, a beautiful summer's day. Yes, it was so hot, wasn't it? John said that's what caused the problem. Yes, he said it melted the snow. Then large pieces of ice began to fall and started an avalanche. I remembered looking up and seeing all that snow coming down the mountain towards me. Yes, it was incredible. At the time, actually, I remembered wishing I had a camera with me. Me too. I didn't really feel it was dangerous, but a moment later, we were under the snow. How many of us were there in the party altogether? Six, including the leader. Poor Mikey. That was the last time he climbed a mountain. I know, it must be horrible to lose a leg. At the time, he was very unhappy, but now he seems okay. Unit Eleven. Lesson Twenty-Two. Exercise One. Questions One to Ten. Listen to the conversation between two students on the tape. Circle the correct letter A to D. Do you still think about being under all the snow that day? Not as much as I used to. The first three months afterward were bad. Now I just sometimes dream about it. I remember the first few minutes were okay. I thought it would be a great story to tell all my friends, but after about an hour, I was so cold. I knew then it was serious. I know. I remember not being able to hear anyone else. I thought everyone else had died, and I was the only one left. I began to sing to myself. I could move my head a little, and also my right arm, but every other part of my body was trapped. I was okay. I could move my body, 
but there was so much snow on top of me, I couldn't move it away. When they finally removed the snow from on top of me, I actually cried. It seems silly thinking of me, a man, crying like that, but I really did. I didn't cry actually. I was just so happy. I kissed everyone who had helped me out. I was in the hospital for six weeks afterwards. I broke seventeen bones in my body. I just broke my leg. I was only in hospital for forty-eight hours. I think the best part was when I was still in hospital, and we all had a big party there. Unit Twelve, Lesson Twenty Three, Exercise. You will hear a conversation between a famous film star and a student on campus. Choose the correct number in the map below to fill the gap. Sorry to bother you, but I'm lost. Oh, I know you, don't I? You're Audrey Hepburn. Welcome to Paris. Thank you. I'm trying to get to the registration office. Can you help me? Sure. This is the north gate. On the left is the administration office, and on the right is the student cafeteria. Okay. What's that big white building directly in front? That's the campus bookshop. There's a theatre in the same building as well. Great! That tall red brick building just behind the bookshop is the registration office. Oh, thank you so much for helping me. It's a pleasure. Good luck. Unit Twelve. Lesson Twenty Four. Exercise. You will hear a conversation between a famous film star and a student on campus again. They are talking about the lecture. Hi, am I in the right place? I'm looking for the art department. Oh, this is the right place then. How can I help you? Well, to start with, I'm having difficulty orienting myself. Do you have a map? Don't worry. All new students feel the same. Not to worry. It's actually quite easy when you understand the system. The number of the room tells you the building, floor, and room. So, for example, five four six means building five, floor four, room six. This list shows you where all the classes are held. Oh, I see. All my classes will be in Building Seven. That's pretty convenient. Do you need to know anything else? Oh, lots of things. I especially need to know about my first lecture on the history of Western cinema. Could you tell me who will be teaching that course, please? Certainly. That's Professor Laurier. He's really popular with his students. He always teaches in Room Seven Six Seven. When is the first class? It's every Monday and Friday at three p.m. So you'd better get a move on. It starts in thirty minutes, and I've heard he is really strict about being on time. Do I need to take anything to class? Yes, you need to purchase the textbooks and other materials, but you can do that at the first class. Unit Thirteen, Lesson Twenty Five, Exercise. Questions One to Eight. You will hear a conversation between a landlord and a student who is planning to rent an apartment. The landlord introduces her rental apartment to the student. Complete questions below. The apartment is located on the fourth floor, 
and it is a three-bedroom apartment, with altogether six rooms in total. It's not huge, but it's comfortable. The biggest room is the living room, of course, and it has a sofa, three chairs, a TV, and lots of decorations. It is in a convenient neighborhood, with with two grocery stores and a couple of restaurants. There is also a playground nearby. Oh, that's great! Can I ask how much do I have to pay per month if I want to rent it? Of course, three hundred pounds per month. Well, is there anything else I have to know? Okay, let me think about it. Ah,、uh, yes, if you want to get an internet access, we can help you to do the application form, but you have to pay yourself. Yes, of course. I'll probably get it a month later. Thank you so much. Unit Thirteen, Lesson Twenty Six, Exercise. Questions One to Six. You will hear a tenancy agreement. Complete questions below. Write no more than three words for each answer. Tenants are expected to pay their rent on a weekly basis. Failure to comply can lead to an immediate termination of the contract, unless expressly agreed between the landlord and the tenant. All tenants are expected to pay two weeks' deposit and one week rent in advance. All deposits paid are refundable, except in circumstances in which tenants have caused damage to any artifact that has been provided in the house, including electrical fittings, carpet. And other similar items for which the landlord has incurred cost for repair or replacement. All tenants are expected to keep all shared areas tidy and clean after the use of such shared space. Otherwise, deposit could be taken for this reason. Tenancy contract can be terminated by either side, landlord and tenants, after giving two weeks' notice. The contract will be for duration of three months only, renewable on agreement. Unit fourteen. Lesson twenty-seven. Exercise. Listen to the conversation on the tape. Two speakers are talking about relationships. Hello, you're meant to be Victoria, aren't you? I believe you're my wife. <laughs> yes, that's right. You're Beckham, aren't you? So what do you do? I'm a teacher. What about you? That's so strange. I'm a teacher as well. I teach mathematics. I haven't seen you before. Where do you come from? Oh, I'm from the States, New York, to be precise. Oh, how fascinating! I've always wanted to go there. I've never been to America before. I'm from England myself, just just a small town. You won't have heard of it. May I ask how old you are? I'm twenty-eight. Oh, your voice sounds younger. Actually, you're the same age as me. Do you often come to this kind of party? No, this is the first time. But I'm enjoying myself. I enjoy the anonymity. Yeah, me too. Unit fourteen. Lesson twenty-eight. Exercise. Listen. To the conversation on the tape, two speakers are talking about music. Did you choose Victoria because you like music? Yeah, I love all genres, but my favorite would have to be pop. I know it's not cool, but I like it in an ironic way. I don't mind pop music, 
but I much prefer rock. I'm sorry, but I can't stand rock music. I used to like it when I was at college, though. Do you like any other kind? Oh yeah, my tastes are pretty eclectic. If I'm just trying to relax, then I'll maybe listen to some jazz or soul. On the other hand, if I'm getting ready for a night out with my friends, I'll listen to some hip hop or R and B to lift my energy level. I guess I like most of the music you like. So Beckham, I guess you're really into football. Actually, I am. I'm a bit of a fanatic. What about yourself? It's not bad, I suppose, but I regard it as a social occasion rather than appreciating the sport itself. I like the atmosphere of football matches. Really? Actually, I'm playing in a match on Saturday. Would you care to come and cheer me on? It's three p.m. at the local sports centre. Okay, that sounds like a lot of fun. Are your team any good? I'd hate to be cheering a bunch of losers. Hey, watch it. We're not bad. I'm only kidding. I'm looking forward to seeing you play. Unit fifteen. Lesson twenty nine. Exercise. Listen to the tape. You will hear a lecture made by Professor Hu. I'm going to tell you about the specific skills required to improve your listening comprehension. At a beginner level, it is of course impossible to understand every word that is being spoken. So I recommend that a beginner should try to listen for the gist of what is being said. The gist is the general meaning or sense of something. The easiest way to improve is to practice listening for the stressed words in a sentence, because these are the words that carry the weight of meaning. At an advanced level, students should be able to able to understand almost every word. They should not only understand the main ideas, but also the specific details. You will, of course, come across words that you don't understand. But you should try to understand the words from the context, which is what native speakers do. At an intermediate level, that is between beginner and advanced, you should be doing a mixture of the two, but you will be even more dependent on context. If you want to practice on your own, you can listen to language cassettes, radio, and TV broadcasts in English, or better still, find a language exchange partner, which doesn't have to be a native speaker. Don't choose language cassettes that are too easy, or you won't improve. It should be just a little difficult, so you are forced to listen carefully. Unit fifteen. Lesson thirty. Exercise. Professor Hu. Continues his lecture about question types that frequently appear in IELTS listening part. Now I want to talk about information related specifically to the IELTS listening test. There are a variety of questions, each designed to test different listening skills. That is your ability to understand overall meaning, to listen out for specific information. To understand different kinds of questions, and then your ability to process that information through appropriate exercises such as form filling, multiple choice, and gap filling activities. For example, there may be a conversation between two people where one of the people is giving personal information about him or herself to the other. Maybe there will be some multiple choice questions. Where you are given a choice of four possible answers, only one of which is correct, followed by a gap-filling exercise, where you have to fill in the missing information on a form. Before a listening test begins, remember the first thing you should always do is to read carefully and understand the questions. 
you will be able to listen only once to the recording. The exam paper will tell you which is the case. The speed of the recording will be at a natural pace for a native speaker, and there is a mixture of native accents. That might be difficult for some of you, so prepare well by listening to practice IELTS recordings before the exam. Unit 16 Lesson 31 Exercise Gump went to Maya Chocolate Shop to apply for the job as chocolate maker. First, he was asked to fill in a questionnaire about his personal information. Well, hello. I've come to apply for a job as a chocolate maker. Great! First you need to fill in this application form. I can help you if you like. OK. How old are you? I'm 22. Well, firstly, have you ever done this kind of work before? I used to help my aunt make chocolate at home, and I really like chocolate, and I know the names of every brand, so I can help people when they are choosing what to buy. Well, well, that is certainly helpful. Next. What qualities do you have that make you qualify for this position? I'm reliable and I'm always on time. That's good to hear. Can you tell me about any previous work experience? I've never had a job that paid regular wages before, but I have experience doing odd jobs. What do you know about the chocolate industry? Well, I know there are different kinds of chocolate. Bitter chocolate, that is really high in cocoa. Milk chocolate and then white chocolate, which isn't really chocolate at all. I know that good quality chocolate can also be good for your health because it has lots of vitamins in it, as long as you don't eat too much. That's right. That's a really good answer. It seems you know quite a lot. Why do you think you could be suitable for this job? Well, I think a box of chocolates is just like life. You never know what you'll get. I hope I can share my love of chocolate and life with others and make your business just as successful as it can be. Unit 16 Lesson 32 Exercise After completing questionnaire, Gump went to see the boss. Hello, Gump. Won't you sit down? Thank you. I've been looking at your application form and I'm very impressed. I especially like your comment about life being like a box of chocolates. I'd like to offer you the job. Can you start now? Yes, that's wonderful news. Firstly, I would like to talk about the philosophy of this company. We pride ourselves on producing the highest quality products. Our customers demand the finest chocolate and we have a policy that if a customer is unhappy with something they buy here, they can get their money back and a free box of chocolates as well. I think that's a great idea. So, of course, it is important that we maintain good standards or we would quickly go out of business. I understand. When we recruit new employees, we are looking for people who not only have experience and a love of chocolate making, but also who have a passion for life in general. I think you possess all those qualities. <laughs>